Hello, welcome to episode one of Bedroom Perfumery, the series where we teach you how to take raw ingredients like this to mix together and make your own unique creations like this. Class is in session. With the channel name being School of Scent, this series naturally made sense. This is really gonna be teaching you guys a lot. This is getting into the nitty gritty of the art and science of perfumery. Not everybody will be into this kind of stuff. Some people only want to talk about the popular scents that's already on the market, and that's fair enough. Uh, but like music, when you are watching things that are complex, like bands or concertos playing, you don't really get a true appreciation for the masterful creations and how skilled someone is unless you yourself have a background in music or you play the instrument yourself. And that's a similar way in perfumery. In perfumery we have notes and accords, literal references to music that come together uh, in a way that not a lot of people know much about. It's a very much behind the scenes uh, industry perfumery and that's the whole point of this series. It feels like it's not very accessible uh, to be able to know how to make fragrances in your own home. So the whole point of this series is not to be the most professional thing in the world, making you guys create fragrances to an industry standard with some professional labs, like no, this is going to be very ghetto, very much DIY, it's going to be in your own home, in a room, uh, I'm, going to, I'm not going to make this expert at all, I'm not an expert myself at all guys, I am completely an amateur, I only recently got into this uh, stuff maybe six months ago, uh, and yeah, I'm just very new to all this. So, remember guys, this is not for professionals, this is for accessibility. Let's get into it. A small word of note, before you start creating your own perfumes at your own home, I do generally recommend you take a fragrance course beforehand. I was into popular fragrances for many years as a consumer. The first fragrance course I took was in the UK by Experimental Perfume Club in uh, October 2019. And from that time onwards, I've done maybe about three courses in total, one of them being online. I definitely recommend that you do uh, one that's in person, uh, but also uh, do an advanced course. Most places, depending on where you are in the world, find your local best perfumery course that you can, and do the advanced level that they usually offer. They offer a beginner's one and an advanced one. Uh, that's why I recommend to you guys, or just do a beginner one, or don't do them at all. Don't let you know, waiting for a perfume course stop you from getting into perfumery if you want to. The whole point of this series is to show how easy it can be. The main section of this video will be about setting yourself up for a perfumery, sort of like setting up your own lab in your house. Now, the actual process of creating the fragrance, I'll save it for another lesson just to ensure that this video doesn't become too long. But essentially, all you need really is a room in your house. Bear in mind, there will be some smell. <laughs> Even if you store your fragrances really well, uh, there will be a little bit of smell coming out from the containers and when you inevitably get a few drops here and there in your work area. So I personally don't mind, I don't care if it's in my own bedroom, uh, but if you do mind about that, you know, find another room in the house, like a little office space or a, a garage or something like that. Second of all, how much should you expect to pay for all this? Uh, I will do the cost breakdowns in the end, but for me personally, using materials from a company that I actually did a perfumery course with, which is called uh, Cotswold Perfumery, owned by John Stephen, I end up spending maybe about £500 overall just to get the whole setup with about 60 different raw materials. I recommend a, a smaller amount for you guys starting off, uh, but overall, I, I, my, my reasoning is that you, know, you could spend £500 on a PS5, which, fine, it's entertainment, but this is entertaining and also productive and gives you a, uh, a new uh, skill to go along with it, and which is more rewarding in overall, in my opinion. So I think it's easily worth the money. The next section is why should we get into perfumery in the first place? Like I said in the beginning of the video, you can't understand the musical masterpieces in front of you unless you play the instrument. If you want to truly understand perfumery, this is how you do it. You understand its components, sort of like cooking. You got to understand the ingredients to understand cooking. Second of all, it's creative. It's a creative outlet for you. For me, I found that it's unlike an instrument which is loud. This is something you can do at any time. I do, I do live in a flat share. 
uh, I find that I can just go into perfumery whenever I'm stressed, whenever I'm having uh, trouble sleeping, just thinking about curly fragrance, getting loads more views than I do. Uh, so I just literally get out of bed, go to my table and I just sit down and experiment and you just lose yourself. As everyone knows, if you want to have good mental health, you have to have experiences of getting into a state of flow. That's what perfumes do. You literally just think about the smell, how to tweak a formula and how to make it smell better. Third of all, you will never create the dream fragrances in your own mind because it is your own head unless you make it yourself. A perfumer can try their best to get as close as possible to a brief that you have in your mind, but if you want to create something that's beautiful in its own way to you, or you want to create something that's weird, just like an interesting concept, you can do it yourself. You have to do it, get the ingredients, and make it, make it happen, guys. And finally, it's sort of selfish, but it's pride. It's just an emotional journey and experience, uh, creating a fragrance that you didn't wear, but know that you yourself made it, and realizing, hey, anyone could create something nice smelling, definitely. It's just something more rewarding than simply buying something off a shelf and consuming it. So let's break it down. You wanna get into perfumery, and I'm telling you, it's not that difficult to get into. What do you need? First of all, you will need a room, which should be easy enough for most people to get. Second of all, you will need a desk, a nice sturdy desk, hopefully something fairly wide. You don't wanna get a too small um, of a workspace, so you know, make sure you're getting something reasonable. Thirdly, underneath your desk, I recommend you add a bin, something to throw away any pieces of paper uh, or any, any notes or anything like that that you're using, especially scent strips. Essentially, you're gonna throw away a lot of scent strips. Secondly, after that, you will need something like a small glass container that'll hold all your pipettes. In perfumery, it seems a bit crazy at first, but you have to get used to the fact that you use your pipettes once. You add a material one pipette, you throw that pipette away, you can't use it again. So get uh, one big jar that you're seeing here in the B-roll that will contain a lot of your pipettes. You will also need a cover for the table because no matter how hard you try, you inevitably get a few splashes or drops onto the table, ruins the material, so you want to keep that clean, you want to have a material that's easy to wipe and uh, keep sanitary. Next, you need some sort of system to display your material so you can get easy access to them. As you can see, I've sort of got this uh, little spice rack thing that I got from Amazon for like 15 pounds, it's nice and cheap, it's extendable, uh, that's what I recommend to you essentially, so <laughs> again, the cooking analogy is sort of like cooking, it's your ingredients, I have my bases at the front row, my mid notes in the middle, and then my top notes at the top. It's a nice, easy system. I put them in alphabetical order, my materials, you'll see later. After that, you will need a little glass container to add the materials to, and optional, but ideal, I do recommend that you get something that keeps your container in place so you're not knocking things around. As I said before, you will need some pipettes. Ideally glass, sort of like when drinking <laughs> juice out of a glass, you want the material that doesn't react with the fragrance molecules, but you can use plastic as well, which is cheaper. Of course, that is not as good for the environment. I recommend glass, and uh, you'll need at least 100 of them. And something I should mention about the glass pipettes specifically is make sure that they have a wick, this little paper wool thing in, in the back of it that uh, stops the perfume material going back into the teat that you need to use to draw up materials. It may seem like a small detail, but it's to make sure that you're not cross-contaminating different materials into your formulation. Of course, you'll need a big stack of scent strips, and optional, but again, I recommend, is that you get a holder for scent strips that you can keep to the side as you're working and modifying your fragrance formula. And I recommend a comfortable chair. Don't underestimate this. I've got this weird metallic chair thing going on, and uh, I'm regretting it, so uh, yeah, definitely get a good chair or some good pillows to support you whilst you're sitting down for a long time. Optional, you will need a desk lamp as well. I find that it really helps in the, those late night shifts working in the perfumery lab. And I recommend a piece of paper that has a table on there telling you what material you've been using for your formula and how many drops you've been using. I got this fancy one here from Cotswold Perfumery, but you can just go on Excel spreadsheet and make your own as long as you know the material you're using. Ideally, the concentration you're using as well, how much has been diluted, and the amount of drops you're using, and then a few more columns for modifications, as you can see here in this example. So that keeps a, a record of what fragrances you've made. So if you've created an absolute beast, and you want to recreate it later on in the future, you know the ingredient that you've uh, used. Another thing relating to keeping note of how your raw materials smell, I personally have a Word document of different tables. You know, I've got my base notes colored in one color, 
my hard notes and my top notes and I will smell them or read the odor profiles online to see what kind of uh, profile each scent has. At the end of the day, I still do recommend that you do just put things on your skin and see how they react and your brain will remember them much more vividly in my experience. I feel like perfumery is more of a, an experienced art rather than something theoretical. You need to just get in there and try things. And lastly, of course, you'll need the materials themselves. So essentially, you are going to need to find the best website for you. All I can recommend really, from my experience, is something for the UK and something for North America. In the UK, you either go take the course at Coswell Perfumery and then buy the materials from them. Uh, that's the only way you can get access to, the, to their materials. It's really convenient. John dilutes everything for you straight away. It's very good. I, I recommend that for you guys in the UK. Or you can go to Pellwall, which who are also very good, a good website uh, that give you nice odor scent profiles for each material you're using. That keeps it nice and straightforward when you're a beginner. If you're in North America, generally the consensus is that the Perfumer's Apprentice is a great website to use. So both of these websites essentially are what you're going to be using to buy your materials. And the great thing about these guys is that they both do a beginner's kit. Just keep it simple, guys. Remember, the theme of this video is accessible. Get a beginner's kit that has maybe 30 materials. I have about 60. That's because I use many of these materials before in my courses, as I said, but keep it simple. Learn the basics first, like, like in music. Learn your very basic chords first before going to more advanced stuff. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. Some of these websites do pre-dilute these materials. I recommend you dilute, get them pre-diluted, have them pre-diluted in perfumer's alcohol instead of dealing with them neat. It's less safe to deal with perfume materials neat. I repeat, do not handle perfume materials neat. You need to have gloves on. I just recommend you get them pre-diluted. I'm sure no matter where you are in the world, you can email these websites. I'm sure they'd be happy to pre-dilute them for you. It makes it much more simple to use um, and each material will be diluted to a certain amount depending on how strong it is. Some materials you can dilute them to 10%, others you need to dilute them down to 1% because they're so strong. So again, email these guys. If they don't pre-dilute them already, ask them to, I'm sure they'll be happy. And that's it guys, we'll keep it there. So this chapter of this series is just set up. I know when you're getting into something new that needs a time and money investment that you sometimes can feel overwhelmed, that's a risk. So that's all for now. Uh, as I said, I easily think this is worth the money. Uh, these spending this much money on this on these the materials and and the equipment that you need will uh, last you many many months. They're, you don't use these things very quickly. You use a variety of materials, so don't worry. The levels in these materials won't go down too quickly. Once you've got the setup go, going for you, as I said, like playing an instrument, I think it's worth just experimenting with the notes just smell them you need to know what you're working with of course if you have done a course beforehand it does make things a little bit easier but you can just sit in your home and what you can do is one of two things we have this material called opopanax oil we don't really know how this smells so we can simply take one of our scent strips and just dip it in there just a tiny bit this is the best way to smell it that that's not off your skin or I think even better is actually to put it on your skin because you appreciate that every material then has its own profile you see how it reacts with your own skin as well and just how it dries down every single material has its own dry down you need to know how it works you need to smell it for a long time on your skin and your brain will remember it much more easily than using words so so like a splash on just get a bit on your skin like this raise it up get a bit of liquid on your hand and then just smell it throughout the day you will remember the materials much more easily. Try to have a variety of materials all over your arm. But as I said, have it pre-diluted. Don't have neat materials on your skin. That's not as safe. This was a different type of video. What do you guys think? Did I overwhelm you? Was there too much information? I'm not sure if there's that many people who are into this sort of topic, but I think it's pretty cool. And you know, I think it opens up this channel to a, a new world of possibilities with content. I'm gonna to try to make some fun videos like recreating popular fragrances in my own bedroom or uh, trying to create weird, unique ideas that you guys recommend and then seeing if other people like them as well. It should be a good series, guys. Let me know uh, what questions you have in the comments down below. I'm gonna to try to put as many resources that are helpful and the websites um, included in this video down in the description. Um, so yeah, let me know guys, if you have any other questions so far at this point, we're just doing setup and smelling of the materials so we get used to what we have and then we'll go from there. Make sure to check out our other videos as well in the meantime that are related to perfumery itself and I'll see you in the next one. Class!
dismissed.